Like you don't believe the son was literally begotten in the sense of that he proceeded from from God and came out of God. You believe he's always there consciously, eternally backwards, correct? Well, I believe that, you know, he's he proceeded or came forth from God, just like how the Holy Spirit, the scripture talks about as well. When I look at certain scripture where it talks about Jesus was proceeded from the Father, in all those scriptures that I understand, because there's a few of them, it talks about that he came forth from Father, but he was coming down to this world. So when I read it, I don't see any scripture that actually says that he came forth or um, proceeded from the Father and then came into existence. I don't know of any scripture that says that. So when, when Jesus said, I proceeded forth and came from God, he said both that I proceeded forth, and then he said, and I came from God. And Which where verse is that? Which one are you looking where, at? Let's see. I think you're thinking of John 8, 42. Yeah. On, it's on the screen. Can you see that? Yep. So tell me, that's, is that the one? Yeah, it says, I proceeded forth and came from God. The right. Greek word used where, where it says proceeded forth is uh, excelthon. That's what I was and, just saying, yeah. Yeah, and the, and that word means to go or come out of something. So here's the word that we're looking at here. And um, so King James, go out, come, depart, go forth, come out, come forth. To go or come forth with mention of a place of which one goes at one point, he departs of those who leave a place of their own accord. Uh, to go from assembly, and it gives all these different um, ways it can be understood. The Strong's definition, uh, to come forth, depart, escape, go out, all these different things, proceed, spread abroad. So when you're looking at John 8 here, it's on the screen here. Can you see that? Yep. So this is the King James. So here it says here, for Jesus said to them, if, I, if God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth. And came from God, neither came of myself, but he sent me. When I'm looking at this verse, so I'm reading it obviously a little bit differently than you. I'm seeing this talking about where he where his origin was, that he was originally with the Father, and he was right. sent by the Father to this world. That's how I understand that. Yeah, I I understand that position. Yeah. It's so, it's just it's we, my issue with that is that's not how the early church understood that. Uh, especially Novation and Tertullian, they they would use this phraseology in terms of his begetting, and they would strictly use that word proceeded from right. him. Well, so don't get me wrong. I mean, we could. I don't. We don't have to have a battle of church fathers because we can go back and forth on that. That's church fathers is you can kind of roll the dice, and there's some different things out there. So I think we would both agree with Scripture being our our authority, right? Yeah, that's fine, but I'm not uh, definitely going to, I'm definitely not going to write off the, oh, no. if, if, there's, if there's an issue like this where you could easily look at it the way you just articulated and yep. I could look at it the way I articulated Sure. and, and I could find it in the early church Sure. and then, and, and I could find it in people that no one deemed a heretic for sure. those of you watching, like, like when you look at what we just read. I believe Jesus proceeded forth and came out of God. So when he says, I proceeded forth and came from God, he said two different things. So it, like no one should ever be saying like I'm heretical for viewing that the way I do because it's completely logical. And not only that, but the church fathers viewed it the way I viewed it. And not only that, but none of the, the pre-Nicene fathers viewed it any differently than what I just said. So it's not only that some of them are agreeing with what I say, there were none that are, were articulating an eternally backward son that so I just, know of. So it's here, I don't see this teaching, Jesus talking about how he came into literally existence. I think he's talking about where his home was prior and who sent him here. Mm-hmm. Well, the fact that he said, I proceeded forth and came from God is a very bizarre way to say things if he's just saying, I came from God. I've never had, had anyone come to my house and double, double bang that statement in two different ways. It's a very bizarre thing. I don't think anything you read after that disproved my belief. 
because uh, I also believe that he is telling them he came from God. So when I see I proceeded forth and came from God, when I hear him say I proceeded forth, I'm thinking of his begetting. And then when I hear and came from God, I'm thinking exactly what you think. When you read the verse, you read both and you think he's double emphasizing that he came down from heaven. I think that's a very bizarre thing to do uh, because you would never say if you came somewhere from somewhere else that I proceeded forth from the supermarket or I pro proceeded forth from here or there. The reason that I believe Jesus came out of God is because uh, I need to have a true son. I can't have a son by metaphor or title. And I think with your belief, you'd have to admit he's not a true son. He's only son by title. He's only son by metaphor or functional role. For me, he's true son that came out of a father, a divine father. And when Isaac, that, that, that verse you quoted there where, where it says, Abraham rejoiced to see my day, it's actually leading him back to, leading the, the reader back to a time, I believe, when the angel of the Lord stopped Abraham from going through with the sacrifice. And that's pointing back to a time where a true son was about to be slain, not a metaphor. So I actually believe the context you just read actually affirms my view of Jesus proceeding forth from God. If the definition is to go or come out of, it's not really in line with him simply coming from God. The, the, in, in, in Greek, the word is defined as he actually comes out of God. That's, that's, that's my point. So when I'm looking at this word, I don't see this word teaching or in the context of what Jesus was stating in John 8, that this is talking about where his beginning started. Right. Well, you, at least you understand when I see I proceeded forth from, and came from God, and I see the word in Greek means I came out of. Yep. And then I see in the church fathers, Novation and Tertullian, Using this do, exact, do you have exact do you have exact quotes for any of those guys? Can we can look them up? I, I could read them. Do you have exact quotes that I can put, put on the screen yeah. as well? Yeah, sure. Yeah, this is Novation on the Trinity chapter 31. He Novation. is before he is yeah. before all things, but after the Father, since all things were made by him, and he proceeded from him, of whose will all things were made. So they use that same terminology. And uh, that's uh, on the Trinity, chapter 31, by Novation. He then, when the Father willed it, proceeded from the Father. And he who was in the Father came forth from the Father. And he who was in the Father, because he was of the Father, was subsequently with the Father, because he came forth from the Father. So now do you see these two words that we were discussing? Yeah. I, pro I proceeded forth. Yep. And came from God. Now you yep. see both. You see both words there. Yep. That are in the Bible. You see, I proceeded forth from Him. Yep. And I came forth from the Father. Now you see, the early church viewed this as His begetting. So this is interesting to me. This sounds. <laughs> this sounds like Arianism to me. It's kind of interesting here. So this is the view you're sharing. I get it. I understand what you're what you're saying now. Um, can, can I break down like some of these things he's saying, like uh, from my like my perspective and my study? So is that is that all right? Yeah. So like it's saying like Christ was always in the father. But when it when it's saying that it doesn't mean like like we we kept reading down and he said when the son came out of the father, it caused the second person to the father. You remember reading that it yep. caused the second person to the father the son. So when it, it seems like sometimes he's contradicting himself, but what the anti-Nicene fathers believed was the son resided in the father as the word or reason. And then when God brought him forth, he became conscious. When God first begat him out of his eternal essence, he became conscious. And then at that point, he became the son. So there was a point where Novation said, he was always with them because he was always a father. But the way he was always with him wasn't in a way where he was interacting with him in the same sense as he was interacting with them after the begetting was complete. And, and in Tertullian and against Hermogenes chapter three, 
they he believed there was a time where God wasn't always father, where the son wasn't always with the father, where the father was God, mm -hmm. God alone, but you couldn't call him father because there was no son in relation to him. That's in against Hermogenes chapter. Now, do you believe the father's always been the father? No, I, I believe that there was a time the father was just God and he mm -hmm. had within himself his reason and the reason. Uh, and, and I agree with Tertullian when he said reason was the building blocks for word. So what Tertullian believed was God was reasoning within himself eternally, having no beginning. They use the term the anti-Nicene fathers use the term unbegotten mm -hmm. and they they pinned it alone on the father, not never the son. So when they pinned it on the father, they were saying he had no beginning. No one brought him into existence. Mm -hmm. They called the son begotten, meaning he was brought into being out of the eternal substance, not like Arius, right. where he's created ex nihilo. Or well, he's there, there, there is a difference, though, Chris, because when you do say at some point he wasn't in existence, you can use the word begotten, but you did say, but he really wasn't interacting with the Father. So there was some point where Jesus obviously didn't exist, even though yeah. he was in the Father. Yeah. So but the, no matter yeah, which, no matter which way you word it, I mean, if you want to word it your way, I get it. But I'm saying at some point you still have to acknowledge he came into existence, thus, i.e., created. There's, there's no way around that. Well, well, in the modern definition of create, you're right. There's no way around it. Because in the modern definition of create, it's to come into existence. But biblically, he was begotten, and you can't use the term created. And none of the church fathers use the term created. Even the Council of Nic Nicaea 325 stick, uh, described him as begotten, not yeah. made. And yeah. when they said begotten, not made... They weren't defining the word begotten as unique like Trinitarians do today, where they say the word monogenes means unique. That's the what it does mean in Greek, though. Well, it means uniquely born, uniquely yep. begotten. Unique, so one of a kind. Yeah, but it's it's not it's not merely unique. So when the term monogenes is used, the most honest way to interpret it is to interpret uniquely begotten. Not yes. to just shave off begotten right. and just take unique because most Trinitarians like, and I'm sure you you use this in debates, when you're debating someone and they use these verses where Jesus is born of God and the, the term, the Greek term monogenes is there, you say, well, that just means he was unique, not born. But in the, the church fathers viewed it as he was uniquely born when they read that. Right. Term. Now, 